Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. I have a special treat. Thanks to the support of my patrons, I have secured another instrument this year. Wow, that's two instruments in one year. Um, I got a used uh, dulcimer and I'd like to show it to you and talk to you about it. So, here we go. Um, first I want to talk about, I'll, I'll show it to you. I'm going to detail each and every part of it for you. Um, because I'm learning that there are people like me out there who are kind of geeky about this stuff um, and like to talk about it and hear about it. Um, so yeah, the first thing I'd like to talk about is called reverb. Um, if you're not aware of what that is, um, I have a friend who owns the music shop up here locally that I, um, that I give banjo lessons at. And um, she was telling me about it one day that she sells, a lot of times she can sell instruments that <clears throat> she brings in from around here and ship them out on reverb. So a lot of, um, I believe you can sell privately on reverb, but also uh, a lot of music shops will have an account there and sell their used um, instruments. So I was able to find this 2015 mint condition McSpadden okay so the way this thing is outfitted this thing would cost over $600 to buy new um, but picking it up used I was able to get it shipped to my door for $375 now that is a smoking hot deal um, I don't know if you're aware of that or not but that is smoking hot um, you know, that 24 year old one right there that I'm pointing at cost me 300. Um, so, okay, let's get into the specifics on this thing. Talk about it. Of course, you're gonna hear it. And yeah, um, I'm just thrilled to be able to have the opportunity to do this. And I wanna again, thank my patrons for their support. I love you guys. Um, okay, so, and you can of course expect a lot of videos that uh, will compare the strengths and weaknesses and sound differences of those two instruments. And it'll really be fun. Um, and I hope you'll join me on that journey. But okay, to start out, we have a flat headstock and I really wanted to get that for my next one. I wanted it to be flat and not the scroll head. Um, various reasons on that, but I just, that's what I wanted to do and I got it. But uh, so the headstock, the fretboard, and right here on the fretboard, that whole piece of wood, the sides and back, that is all cherry wood. My banjo is cherry wood also, but it's a cherry kind of year. Um, the warm tones of cherry. Um, anyway, so that's cherry, and the top is spruce. Um, though the lighting, um, really makes it look like it's cherry. It is spruce. Uh, it's just been exposed to sunlight, you know, I'm sure. And over the years, it has darkened up a little bit beautifully. I think it's beautiful. Um, now, one cool thing about this too, and I was specifically looking for this, um, I wanted either an ebony fretboard or a micarta fretboard. I've not had either. So uh, this is micarta. And um, I was told, uh, by a friend who is a dulcimer instructor and somebody I can bounce things off of, Brett. Hey there, hope you're doing well. Um, I bounced it off of him and he, um, he, he says he can't tell the difference between my card and Ebony and I, and that shocked me. And I, um, you know, I was like, wow, okay. I really am interested now because my card is a cheaper alternative than Ebony. Um, it is not wood. It's a man-made material. Um, I can give you a link down below that'll tell you what it exactly is. But um, they say that it mimics ebony in its feel. And you know, if you've ever felt anything with ebony on it, I describe it almost as butter. I know that sounds silly. Your, your hand would just go right through butter. But, um, I want to say butter in that it's pleasing. It is, because uh, butter is pleasing. I mean, um, when you have your hands on a fretboard that's like that, it, it feels really nice. Um, when I talk about my Pisca banjo down there, 
uh, its fretboard is made of persimmon wood and that uh, is in the ebony family of woods with that tight, tight grain and it gives that feel and it's just amazing. Um, but okay, so that's my Carta. As well, um, the nut and bridge material, I'm looking at those and they don't look like my Carta to me. They could possibly be. I'll have to look it up. Um, I don't know if I can get the information on it. Uh, it's some sort of non-wood material. Um, I'm thinking it's probably my Carta as well. So what I did was I got it, I checked it out and looked it over, um, cleaned it up. I'll talk about that a little bit. Put new strings on it and let her sing. Woo! Um, other features this has on it are Go Ta tuners which those are very nice tuners, you guys. Uh, that's what's on my Pisca. You know, that's seriously high stuff. Um, it also has a strap button, um, which is very nice. My other one doesn't. Um, it doesn't have one at the uh, bottom end of it. So I, you've seen what I do there. Um, and that's kind of a challenge. Sometimes that slides around. So that's nice. It came with a strap, a new set of strings, which there they are. Um, it came with a capo and a uh, McSpadden case. Their soft blue case that they send out. Um, but you can find quality used instruments out there. They're out there. Um, so I am tickled to death to have this. And patrons, you guys, oh, it's just too much. But, um, yeah, let's hear what she sounds like. What do you think? Um, you know, before I get into this, I've got the all walnut over here. Now, you know how that sounds. It's warm, deep, and nice. These are exactly the same scale length. <clears throat> uh, holding them up side by side, they're, they're the same size, okay? So there's no difference there. Um, the micarta, the fretboard material, does not impact the sound, okay? That is just for your feel and look, the look and feel of it, okay? Um, there's a lot to be said for that, though, you know? Um, a lot to be said for look and feel. Book matched cherry there is beautiful. I like to get some different lighting on it because, whew, it's, it's gorgeous, isn't it? So, um, yeah. I'm going to be doing, I'll probably start out, I've got a Christmas song that I'm going to do on this. Um, I've also got, um, I want to do a comparison real quick, just as soon as I can. It may take me about a month to get out. I hope, hopefully not, but I want to do a comparison with this one to that one, just to see, you know, um, it's got the McSpadden quality, of course. Um, uh, that one was made by George Looney in 1995. This one was made by Victor Osborne <clears throat> in 2015. So um, I'm real excited to bring all that to you, talk about it. They both have the same frets. I, I wanted to make sure that I didn't <clears throat> change anything as far as that goes. They both have the six and a half um, and 13 and a half. Um, but other than that, don't you want to hear what this baby sounds like? Woo! Let's get to it. Um, and if you're interested in uh, getting a McSpadden, I am not a McSpadden dealer. That friend I was talking about though, Brett, he is. So um, if you're uh, wanting to buy a new one, they range, I believe, from about $4.75 on up. And, um, you know, I just, I wanted to do that, but I couldn't, I, I couldn't do that at this time, but, um, I'm, I'm tickled to have it and I will, I will, uh, play the strings off of it as you guys know. Um, so, uh, uh, but Brett, I'll leave his link down below for you if you're interested. He also does dulcimer lessons on here, banjo lessons and all kind of that. Um, and you may go, Mandy, you're. You're pr promoting another uh, another banjo and dulcimer teacher? Well, of course I am. We're friends, 
and uh, there's plenty of room in this world for the both of us. Um, so go ahead, check out his channel, subscribe to him, and if you want to buy a new, new dulcimer, um, tell him I sent you, you know. Um, I'm sure he'll give you the best possible deal he can, and you know, maybe he'll give you that little friend's discount. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying that. Probably not, but I'm sure he has an amount that he has to get for them. But um, anyway, <laughs> I can't wait to bring it to you. Um, I do have another note about my Carta, okay? Don't, don't be shy or scared off of my Carta that's old. Um, this isn't old by any means. But when I got this, I want you to look closely at this, um, my Carta here. When I got this, you see how nice and beautifully black and shiny that is? When I got this, it was grayed out. There was a lot of gray in it. Every little scratch in that micarta showed. And um, I was worried. I was like, uh-oh. In the pictures, I didn't get close, close fretboard looks. Um, so I was, I was quite afraid. But if you'll see... I got that puppy cleaned up beautifully, okay? So what you do with my card, if you happen to get your hands on one, first of all, you take the strings off, <clears throat> you take warm water on a rag, and you, remember, this is not wood. So you don't have a sopping wet rag, but you, you get some warm water in your rag, um, wring it out, and then you basically scrub your fretboard, okay? Then you come back with the dry part and wipe it all down very, very dry, okay? And you can clean out those little, you know, the, the um, next to the frets, you'll have some buildup. You can clean all that out. That alone did a decent job, okay? Decent. It didn't get rid of the gray, though. What got rid of the gray was my magic sauce, okay? My fretboard oil that I use. And um, you've seen me use that in other things. Um, I don't have it, my hands on it. It's over there. But it's called Music Nomad. And I'll leave a link below for it. It's 100% natural oils. No chemicals. So you're not going to damage any of your wood or anything like that. I use it on every fretboard I own. I've not had any issues with it. And you, you know, the, the bottle of this stuff is going to last you forever. I think it's like 8 bucks. It'll last you forever. You literally use two or three drops for your entire fretboard. So after I had washed it with warm water and dried it thoroughly, I, and anytime you use oil like that, you put it on your rag, not on your wood or your surface, okay? So then <clears throat> I put a couple drops and I oiled this thing up all the way down and wiped it thoroughly. You never leave it sitting on the surface. This number one, again, is not wood. So it's not really intended for this material, but it works well on it, let me tell you. I got rid of all that gray, I can't believe it. Uh, that was such a happy, happy surprise. Um, so yeah, um, it is just gorgeous, is it not? It was strung up three string when I got it. The strings were probably the first strings that ever came on it. Um, these frets are nice and high. I mean, it has, it has very little wear on it. I was, I'm telling you, wow, excellent. But um, that micarta, don't be afraid of it. You can clean it up and it's gorgeous. And the feel of it is butter, like I said. Let's get to those sound clips now, y'all, okay? All right, so first I'm gonna do some uh, strumming, just so you can hear the sustain on this thing. It's amazing. <laughs> Just, wow. All right, let me play a little something for you here. Uh,
it's just like butter like I was saying you guys <laughs> uh, it just feels great um, so what do you think about my newest instrument go ahead and leave me comments below about what you think about it uh, if you'd like to leave me some comments talking about um, how you think it's gonna sound compared to my all walnut dulcimer um, I'm interested to hear what it's gonna do also if you enjoy the content go ahead and give me a like go ahead and subscribe to the channel uh, so you can see more and uh, join in on the fun. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these dulcimers. And um, I actually had a folk craft dulcimer um, when I first started out. I believe it was one of the cheapest models I had at the time. I believe it was about $275 new. Um, this was back in... 2009 I believe um, when I first got into dulcimer but uh, I don't have a lot of experience with many different dulcimers um, I just had that one full craft and um, now two different mixed baddens and that one Ed Mays dulcimer that I had um, I ha that has since parted uh, from departed from my home and uh, been gifted to a dear friend so um, yeah I hope you enjoyed that and um, if you're I know I don't get too technical but I do enjoy listening to these different woods and how they sound and and that sort of thing so um, most importantly before I go I want you to always remember that Jesus loves you bye bye